What's up, everyone? I hope you want to talk about weird ports, because today, today, this is one of my favorite examples. I absolutely love these ports. So, today we're going to be talking about Metal Gear Solid Five, specifically Ground Zero. So, we're going to take a long time, get in-depth with the 360 and PS3 versions of Ground Zeroes, and I'm not showing any footage from the Phantom Pain today, because there actually is some differences with some of the ports later down the line when they were doing the Phantom Pain, like with the Xbox One version, it actually does run at a higher resolution on the Xbox One while pairing back a couple visual features. So we're not talking about the Phantom Pain today, but if anything, that just opens up for an even deeper dive because that's a way bigger game and we could look at a lot more different environmental effects and just environments and all this kind of stuff. So how many of you, you know what? We'll do, we'll do this right now. How many of you in the comments have played either the 360 or PS3 version of this game? Even better if this was, like, your first experience with the Fox engine and seeing what was going on. All right. So, we're going to we're gonna set up the, the ground rules like I always do with these types of videos. So, we're going to show some footage from, like, two baseline versions first. I'm not saying I'm always going to have two baseline versions, but two baseline versions first and then dive into the PS3 version and then also the 360 version second. So... First version I'm going to show is the Xbox One version running on the Series X. Now, the Series X does not enhance this game's resolution, frame rate. It adds some anti-aliasing and HDR, but you're not even going to see the HDR because the capture card is going to be taking that away. Regardless, it's not a great capture card. That's the other thing I'm putting out right in the front. My capture card's not great. That My capture card will drop frames, even just recording at 720p. So some frame drops are not from the games itself. It is from the capture card, but you're still going to get a very good baseline of what's going on here. So to start off, we're going to do the Xbox One version. Like I said, you're not getting that many enhancements on the Series X. The, the only thing that might affect it, and it's going to be the same thing for the PS3 version I'm running, is that Series X has an SSD, and my PS3 has an SSD installed. And if we're comparing that to the 360 version, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to internally install an SSD on a 360. Nothing is running off of disk. Everything's been installed to the drives, either hard drive or solid state, depending on the console. So that's the closest approximation as we're going to get. I don't know how this game handles streaming assets in real time or anything. I don't know if the loading difference is going to make that big of a a change but i want that you know known as to what we're working with here so the xbox one version is actually different than the ps4 version when it came out and somewhat drastically so the biggest biggest difference with the xbox one version is that it runs at 1280 by 720p just a straight 720p and it's still 60 fps and the ps4 version was a full 1920 by 7 oh, oh 1920 by 1080 uh and that's what makes the phantom pain xbox one port interesting because it's 900p but we're not talking about that today i'm getting a little, a little ahead of myself so the xbox one version i feel like is a very good baseline for what we're talking about here today because the somewhat target resolution of the 360 and ps3 versions are 720p and we'll get to that in a minute it's not quite it's not quite a full 720p, but this is a really great showcase of resolution being not necessarily the most important factor when it comes to image quality and the artistic direction of video games. So, and I'm not saying resolution isn't important, but honestly to me, especially with the more and more current we get, I feel like resolution is becoming less and less important. And I'm not saying, you know, that like, oh, 1440p or 4K like looks bad or isn't adding enough to the image. For certain games, the the raw resolution increase is drastic. Think about something more realistic looking like a Forza game or Gran Turismo. However, this is somewhat, I want to say it's stylized, but I feel like more so graphical effects are more important than raw resolution. And this is a very good showcase as to why that's the case. So we're, like I said, base Xbox one version was 1280 by 720. It never had any one X enhancements. Series X does next to nothing for the image quality besides some more anti-aliasing. However, I'm using an upscaler that applies some anti-aliasing for the PS3 and 360 regardless. So like I said, we're, we're upscaling images a bit. We're doing a little bit to them, but it's, it's more just enhancing the base quality of the image. It's not going to radically change anything. So Xbox One version has most of the graphical features from the PS4 version. It's just running at 720p. Now, 
roughly, if we're talking about PC equivalents, it's, I believe, a mix of high and medium. I think it's what the PC version defaults to. And then obviously resolution is the main takeaway and differences here. But I believe that's what the Xbox One and PS4 versions are sitting at. It's just a matter of resolution. So we're going to use some Xbox One footage here. And then we're going to go to the extreme end of things. We're going to show some footage. Uh, and I keep saying we. This is all me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to show some footage of the PC version with all the settings like set to high and extra high running at 1440p. However, the only thing is with the way I'm recording footage and rendering the video, the video is only going to be 1080p, so you're not going to get like the full 1440p image of the game. However, I feel like just even bumping it up to 1080p with what you're seeing in YouTube, because YouTube's also going to compress the image and stuff, so you're nothing I can do is going to make you get the same like pristine image quality I'm getting on my TV, and my TV is really good, but just like the raw actual video out of these systems is definitely way clearer and cleaner than whatever my cheap capture card is doing on top of YouTube compressing the footage, which is a real shame because I wish I could show all of you like in-person footage so you can really see that because like I'm afraid like you're going to look at the footage and you're going to be like, oh, you know, that doesn't look that good. But like it honestly, it, it really still does look good on my TV and stuff. So PC version, like I said, you're really going to get be getting like 1080p but it's going to be 1440p downscaling to 1080p so you can see what full extra high settings and at least a 1080p resolution will do to the image and then the xbox one version so we can have like a baseline 720p image with higher settings so now that we got all that out of the way and i know that took a minute but now let's talk about the most exciting part i hopefully this will be enough time to have footage of both of them running for a bit because i want you to like really have it in your head what this game still looks like because i don't know if people still actively go back to stuff i do i think ground zeros is incredible and if i may go off on a bit of a tangent here i i i know this is going to be a weird take but i kind of like ground zeros more than the phantom pain i think it was just because of like when it was coming out like everybody was so hyped for whatever the phantom pain was going to do and ground zeros just felt like pure hype and anticipation but i also feel like from a pure gameplay standpoint camp omega is like super well designed and cohesive and there's so much you can do in it and the little routes you can take little things you can do differently and it just feels super well constructed not that there's not areas in the phantom pain like this but all of ground zeros is just one really good constructed base and i like the the silly side ops and stuff like that uh i don't know i think maybe it's time period maybe it was just phantom pain got a little too open-ended and a little too less uh controlled that i kind of end up liking ground zeros even more but this isn't really an opinion video on ground zeros i just want you to know where i'm coming from i love ground zeros like a lot i love metal gear solid a lot so i have a lot of stake in this i'm super passionate about mgs stuff and I, weird ports so this is i've been so excited to do this video it's been like in the back of my head for a long time the 360 version of ground zeros was actually the first one i played because i did not have an xbox one yet when this came out so i was playing this on like an old 1080 element so it's like nice garbage video quality i'm telling you those were the days. So 360 version was my first experience with this. And when I got an Xbox One, it was actually the first Xbox One game I got. I could, like I said, I, I'm obsessed with Metal Gear Solid. And I think Ground Zeroes was incredible. Not that I don't think the Phantom Pain is too, but Ground Zeroes is such a special moment in time for being super into MGS and stuff. And the gameplay was so next level for all the stealth stuff. And oh, my, my, my stealth is off the charts in this video you'll you'll see what i mean you'll see what i mean so first thing we want to talk about we're going to show some ps3 footage now is that the resolution is 720p and you can't see my air quotes i'm doing while i'm recording this right now but i'm doing i'm doing some pretty exaggerated air quotes so it's 720p but that's it's not 1280 by 720p now, I'm going to have to thank Digital Foundry a bunch for this information because luckily this is when they really started to ramp up technical coverage on games. They actually have pixel counts of both the PS3 and 360 version. Now, I'm not going to be parroting the whole article. I literally, there's just like two little things that I didn't quite remember or didn't know off the top of my head that I wanted to get info on. But as, as always, 
Digital Foundry is incredible. You can go read the old art article they still have up. I can't remember if they did a video specifically for the PS3 and 360 version as well, but you can at least go read the article and see the technical breakdown. But the 360 and PS3 version both run at the same resolution, but instead of 1280... Uh, by 720 it's 992 by 720 very very specific there and i'm sure this was like for a very good reason they're probably play testing and testing over and over again to find out how much they could push it while still having a somewhat acceptable frame rate and not so low that it was just a blurry mess i i feel like they struck such a sweet spot with this resolution i i think it's like one of the best looking ps3 and 360 games honestly it looks incredibly good so it's it's getting close to the xbox one version's resolution it really it really is um it's not it's really not that far off and again for when you're taking the count for what these systems were doing normally like even Look at, like, Metal Gear Solid 4, and that is a huge technical achievement. It is a higher resolution and mostly a higher frame rate, I think. But as far as pure image quality and graphical effects, like, Ground Zeroes blows that out of the water. Not that MGS4 looks bad. It still looks great, but it looks like a PS3 game, you know, as far as a, from a technical makeup point of view. While Ground Zeroes definitely was starting to push a more next-gen graphical feature set. Not that this is. Obviously, it's paired back to run on old hardware, but more of these modern technical sensibilities we started to have around, uh, what was this, like like 20, 2012-ish or so? Um, my, my numbers could be off there. You know, t- time's a blur. Um, so, yeah, you got the 992 by 720p, and obviously, frame rate's going to be the biggest thing to take a hit here. It's trying to target 30 FPS, and I remember the 360 version being pretty smooth, but also when I was younger, I was not nearly as attuned to frame drops and resolutions and stuff like that. I mostly just, like, I knew a little bit, but I mostly, like, you know, put disc in. This looks good. This is awesome. We're doing good stuff here. Now I'm, like, super super aware of all this stuff so the frame rate like i said targeting 30 fps now is not super great on the ps3 however if anything to me that kind of just makes it more interesting because you can really see what's buckling down the ps3 and one thing i've really noticed and it's perfect that the main mission of the game is so like graphically intensive with all the rain effects and stuff going on because i think that's the problem now i didn't have i didn't have time while getting all this footage and stuff because like 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 i said this is this this is a one-man thing i'm doing everything by myself with a zero dollar budget you know what i'm saying so as much as i want to test like maybe the daytime side missions and stuff like that. It just really wasn't within the scope of this video. And I'm really hoping at some point I can just go crazy with this stuff. It's just like, at the moment, I can't really feasibly do that. But I'm assuming, looking at some of what was going on during this, there was like one part where I had pause down by the landing zone area you're supposed to do where there's like this running water happening like extra from the rain like different from the rain and it was like really tanking the frame rate so if i had to guess a lot of it has to do with like the rain effects and stuff going on and i'm sure it's more than just that that's the other thing i forgot to mention before Uh, i'm gonna be skipping cutscenes, and i should have skipped the ps3's intro cutscene a little sooner because it started playing a song and i don't know who has that copyright or anything so i'm gonna like the ps3 version might have like a little cut that the other versions don't have um but i don't i I just want to avoid any like copyright issues and i'm skipping cutscenes specific and it it sucks because cutscenes are one of the greatest ways to compare uh graphical stuff and frame rate stuff because like for especially for like the fox engine stuff it's all in engine and it's a like for like shot i kind of try to follow a similar path for each of these different versions so you could really kind of see what was going on but for such a dynamic game that's not exactly possible cutscenes would be great but i'm also worried about some of the cutscene content because i know it gets restricted in certain areas and i'm pretty sure they they patch some of it out at some point i'm just not going to run a risk with any of that stuff it w- it would be great from a side-by-side point of view of comparison but i'm not going to risk that too much you're still going to see plenty of the game running and plenty of me looking around at like textures and maybe the floor a little bit maybe some of the rain effects and enemies and stuff so you're still getting something very good out of it I just, I can't quite play cutscenes for too long or anything. I'm just trying to be careful with what I'm doing here. So, yeah, shockingly, I did not think the frame rate was going to be as bad as it is on the PS3 version, but it is pretty rough. And 
like I said, by no means take that. Don't take that as me thinking that this version isn't cool. If anything, this makes it like the coolest version. This is the version that is like struggling the most. However, it's not just a frame rate different a difference that's different. Wow, that was a tongue twister. It's not just a frame rate difference that's different with the 360 version. The way. Again, according to the Digital Foundry article, the way shadows are being cast or rendered or whatever is actually different in the PS3 version, and it comes out looking a little more solid and a little more, like, like a little better. However, as far as the outlines of the shadows and stuff, it seems to be a lower resolution shadow, even though the shadows themselves seem to be a little thicker and a little more there in the in the image, if you know what I mean. It's just kind of like alias more alias because i think the shadows are a lower resolution it's just as far as the actual like transparencies effects and stuff in the shadows they seem to be a little bit better just lower resolution on the ps3 i did not mean to talk in circles there it's just it's hard to articulate exactly what's going on with the shadows that are different because it is it is a slight difference it is a slight difference now the 360 shadows are a lot i would say softer and less jagged but i would say that they're less uh I don't want to use the word realistic, but less believable looking. But granted, when you're just playing one one of these by themselves in a vacuum, they both look great. It's just doing something slightly differently. So PS3 version runs pretty bad. Um, but like I said, it, it's still within the realms of, I would say, for a PS3 game being acceptable because frame rate was never really good on that console, especially with the cell architecture and stuff. A lot of programmers... Just did not know developers entirely. Just did not really understand the architecture and stuff. So I wouldn't say it's any more ridiculous than some of the other worst performing games we've seen on the system. Like for example, something I've personally been playing, like Yakuza Dead Souls. Like that does not run good. It does not run good at all. However, it is still a cool graphical showcase for all the crazy stuff that's going on it's still a ton of fun it's just the ps3 definitely struggled with this kind of stuff more so than the 360 now sometimes you do get stuff like you know like gran turismo 6 but that is far and few in between compared to normal multi-platform releases that are just generally like not quite as good in the ps3 just due to the architecture being more complicated and stuff so Frame rate's not good and stuff. And the other thing that I kind of didn't personally like. Now, granted, I'm sure you could probably adjust controls and stuff. I was I was screwing around and screwing up so bad because like it's L1 and R1 to aim and to use your weaponry in the PS3 version. While like on the 360 Xbox One PC version, I don't know about PS4. It's like the triggers instead of the bumpers. Now that's not necessarily down to the porting job itself. That's just a difference in control scheme. That was throwing me for a loop. You're going to be seeing me do some silly stuff, trying to wrestle with the controls and then go back to a version that controlled slightly different. You know, I just wanted to point that out. I thought that was like an interesting little thing that they, they changed on that. And I think that was the case with a lot of multi-platform stuff in the PS3 where a lot of times like the triggers were were kind of swapped and a lot of developers wanted to use like l1 and r1 as more so of like the main buttons instead of l2 and r2 when it comes to aiming and stuff like that now something i definitely think i noticed this in the ps3's favor now this could just be like placebo and maybe i wasn't noticing it at first but i swear the ps3 version's like level of detail effects like as far as it's not even like level of detail it's more of just pop in as far as what's there and then what's not depending on the distance so it is level of detail but not difference in detail just there or not it seems to be farther on the ps3 i swear i noticed seeing like guards and stuff from a farther distance than i did with the 360 version so i don't know if that was just something that could play more towards the strengths of what the ps3 could uh could do or like i said maybe it was placebo or maybe they pushed a little too much on the ps3 and maybe that was also affecting the frame rate so that was something else interesting to point out and Something else that's also different is that, and I think it's the same for the Xbox One version, actually, is that the skybox is, like, static, while in, like, the PS4 and PC versions, it's non-static, and it has some movement to it and stuff. Now, I don't think I ever really noticed it. However, it is a difference, and it is there, and the PS3 and 360 version are both completely static. Maybe the Xbox ver ver Xbox One version had some movement in the skybox, depending on the mission that was going on. I swear I read something kind of like that, but I think for like the main Ground Zeroes mission, it was still static. I think. I'm not trying to spread misinformation. I, I could be entirely wrong on that. It's Sometimes it's hard to get very specific details when it comes to all these different ports, especially if they're not 
heavily covered. Now, there, like I said, there was good coverage on this, but there's still very specific things that I want to know that's not common information. So I have to make a lot of speculation with these types of videos. But so everything is obviously of a lesser detail, of a lower lower quality, and everything like that. And then the pop in is also more drastic and stuff. And there seems to be more of a heavy dithering effect. When it comes to transparencies, almost like what you would see on like the Sega Saturn versus the PS1, as far as that more that like that checkerboard dithering look. And part of me, like, I kind of like it. I don't know. Like, I know it's not like stylistically a good choice, but to me, there's just something kind of cool and comfy about it. I think it's because it's making me think of like Sega Saturn games, which I, I grew up playing a lot. I really like that dithered look. You can see it a lot in the grass. You can see it at like long distances when you're trying to look at guards and stuff they start getting like a little dithered and a little checkerboard checkerboarded and stuff i, I like i actually really like that look I, I, I don't know it's just it's a it's a really cool technical kind of uh uh way to bypass some heavy load of transparencies and i don't know if that's exactly what's going on here but if anything that would be probably a pretty good guess because it doesn't quite look that drastic when it comes to the pc and xbox one versions so again it's probably due to computational load and what all they could get away with so i know i've been talking a lot about effects and stuff so let's play some of the 360 version and talk about the differences of that now so the 360 version like i said one difference that i don't know if it's going to be affecting things either way is that it's running off of a hard drive. It's not running off an SSD like the PS3. However, the PS3 can only take so much advantage of that SSD. But it's still faster loading, though. So, 360 version, I'm running it off a hard drive. And I'm pretty sure you kind of have to, regardless, even with the, with just running on the disc and not installing it on the 360, I'm pretty sure even with the disc, it just, like, installs almost all the data anyways. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's what it does. So... Loading is obviously probably a bit better in the PS3, but that's more so due to solid state hard drive kind of stuff. Um, however, the 360 version runs significantly better than the PS3 version. And by significant, I mean significant within a dropping under 30s kind of, kind of way. Not like, oh my god, it's all of a sudden locked 30 or it's going above 30. No, no, it's still locked at 30 and it's still dropping. It's dropping more than I remember. And this is, this is what's so fun to go back to these versions because most of when I've been going back to Ground Zero's, I've been playing it on PC, you know, not even like the Xbox One version. And it was so fun to go back to the 360 version because in my head, I remember I'm like, this version ran so good and it looked so good and it does look good. The PS3 and 360 versions still look like really good for, again, for a PS3 and a 360 game. However, yeah, the frame rate's still not there and it still drops like not, not as much, but a lot. It's like very frequent drops and stuff like that. However, I also think, and I forgot to bring this up while talking about the PS3 version, is that I think there was some screen tearing in the PS3 version and I think that was another relative common problem during multi-platform stuff or just straight development I, I don't know why i singled out multi-platform there was like a lot of ps3 games and stuff that had screen tearing and there was 360 games that had screen tearing and stuff too i just i think i think there might still be some in the 360 version but i think it's to a lesser degree and it's probably due to the frame rate just overall being better and like it's kind of significantly better like it it's definitely hovering way more close to 30 than it is like 15 frames per second but like i said if anything it just it's a really good way to show what is stressing the engine out especially like i said i tried to follow a similar path and try to get somewhat like for like scenes to play out and you know that kind of stuff and the 360 whatever and i'm guessing it has a lot to do with like particle effects in the water and stuff like that whatever it's doing is way easier on the 360s hardware and i'm i'm going to assume probably more so this is probably a gpu thing instead of the cpu cuz again like cpu is just mostly not the thing that video games are going to stress and i'm going to assume this is due to different architecture of the gpu and i believe the the gpu of the ps3 can only access like 256 megabytes of video ram now i'm i could be wrong on how that works all i know is that the ram inside the ps3 is split between system memory and i i think it's video memory where it's 256 and 256 split while the 360 has like a unified 512 megabytes of ram that it can use for like whatever it needs to on top of like a 10 megabyte like e s uh it's, it's esram I, I i'm probably pronouncing that really bad but like 
and I, but I, I don't know how much ag- that really comes into play when it comes to porting games and running games and stuff like that. That little extra bit of like 10 megabytes of whatever RAM that is. But it, it probably largely has to do with that fact. And maybe it just needs more allocated RAM for the GPU to use. If, if that's, if that's how this stuff's working. Like I said, I'm not trying to spread misinformation. I'm trying to speculate as to what the cause of these differences could be. Cause obviously, 360 multi-platform is pretty much always better than the 360 ver- or PS3 versions. It's probably due to the split memory configuration on top of the cell architecture just being more tricky. So, but however, and I don't know if this has something to do with it too. Like I said, I think the level of detail is worse than the 360 and it's more called back and more reined in. And that might have something to do with it as well. Now, I don't know how drastic that would be. And like I said, I don't know if that's like a placebo effect. And I'm not trying to like, talk in circles here i'm just really trying to pinpoint a bunch of different things like i've been enjoying making these videos of like weird ports and stuff but i wanted to try to shovel just a little more information technically in here this time not that i wasn't doing that before but like i really wanted to get to like dissect these even more than i already have been and i would have liked to look at these even more but i do have to be realistic with the amount of time that i'm putting into each video and when i'm getting video videos out and general watch time too because part of me would like to say have two hours of video content for this video and talk about it even more in depth and maybe by like a mission to mission basis and check out more of like the time of day stuff to see if that's affecting the frame rate and see what different conditions can affect what's going on and stuff. It's just, it's not exactly feasible yet. However, and I don't want to, I don't want to drag on with this too much. However, if I keep getting more and more traction, like I have been, it's been really good. Like each video, like a normal video I've been doing, is getting more traction than the last one. More people are liking, more people are commenting, getting more subscribers. It's amazing. Like, thank you all for that. And again, I'm not trying to harp on it too long. I know it could probably get a little annoying, but it really does help a lot. And that tells me that what I'm doing is worth putting a little more time into and a little more time into. And I'm hoping the trajectory just keeps going up. That way, every video I can see, okay, people are enjoying this, I can spend a little longer next time and a little longer next time. So what, I, what I'm kind of hoping, what I'm, what I'm kind of hoping to do is that just keep growing and keep doing things that people seem to be enjoying while I'm also really enjoying them. Obviously, this is like, this is my bread and butter right here. This is my jam. And people seem to, you know, be really interested in these kind of weird ports and stuff. So that hopefully maybe say like a couple months from now, say I have a lot more growth still that maybe we can take like an hour and look into the Phantom Pain. Cause that, that's a game that would necessitate an hour. And I myself have never even checked out the PS3 and 360 versions of that. And I would be super interested in getting my hands on that and doing like an even deeper dive into the Phantom Pain. Cause I feel like we could really have a lot of fun with that. We could really get a lot of information out with that. So if you've enjoyed this video, like I, I've said before, it really does help me know like if I'm doing the right thing. And I, I, I feel, I feel like I really am starting to like find my niche with this kind of stuff. So like the video comment on the video, let me know like the, what the first version of ground zeros you played was. I'm really interested in hearing if there was some other last gen people like me at first. And if you later did get like the, the quote unquote next gen versions or the PC versions or whatever. So like the video comment, uh, subscribe. That's a great help. Like I said, to know that I'm, I'm doing some cool things around here. I really appreciate all that. I appreciate you watching the video. I had a lot of fun getting footage and talking about this. I love Metal Gear Solid. I love it so much. Ground Zero is like the best playing Metal Gear Solid, in my opinion. So that's, that's enough out of me. I hope you enjoyed this and later.